We got ourselves a new animal monster movie. Meg 2, The Trench, and I'm all the way hyped for it. Sharks have always fascinated me, and when you combine that as an action movie with a big CGI budget, oh, I'm gonna have a great time. However, I did think that this was a missed opportunity to explore lesser known shark species, since everybody and their mama already know about Megalodon by now. So, that's what I'ma do. Strap in, we about to jump into the crazy world of prehistoric sharks. If you enjoy this type of content, make sure to like and subscribe. It really helps me take over the world with my nerdiness. Let's go. So first off, let's start with a quick definition as to what a shark is. So, sharks are a type of fish characterized by having a skeleton made completely of cartilage, not bone, but cartilage like the material your nose is made out of. And they have other features as well, such as having five to seven gill slits on the side of their head and pectoral fins that are not attached to their head. Now, to be specific, this is applicable to modern sharks. Many of the entries that we cover in this video may not necessarily share these characteristics. And that's just the reality of dealing with evolutionary trees. A lot of the time, the characteristics or morphology of a particular group may not necessarily be applicable to their common ancestors or ancestors as a whole. With that being said, we will try to keep this list specific to sharks as much as possible, but do note that some of these sharks may share characteristics with other types of creatures and wouldn't necessarily be commonalities with modern sharks of today. So jumping straight into the weird, we have Edistus. And this genus of shark was around during the late Carboniferous period, which is also often known as the Age of Amphibians. Fossil records have them growing to 20 to 22 feet long, which places them around the size of modern great white sharks. However, take a close look at that jaw. It almost appears like its mouth is protruding away from its face. And that brings up a lot of questions as to how it would have hunted and eaten its prey. Its jaw had whirls of numerous serrated teeth with long V-shaped roots stacked on top of each other, almost like roof tiling. Early theories suggested that the teeth whirls were used to slash at prey, but later theories rebuked this, rather implying that the whirls would be more effective as a grasping and slicing weapon. Scientists are still unable to conclusively decide what this unique shaped jaw and tooth whirls would have been used for. So if you have any ideas, let me know in the comments below. If you thought that was weird, wait till you take a look at the Helicoprion. These teeth whirls are so crazy that for the longest time, scientists actually thought that they were looking at fossilized shellfish. Eventually, enough research was done to put forth a decent theory. While it had minimal to no teeth on its upper jaw, its lower jaw would have acted almost like a saw allowing it to feed on both soft-bodied prey and hard-bodied shellfish. If that wasn't crazy enough, then we also have the Parahelicoprion. They're very similar to the Helicoprion, but there are differences in regards to the shape, thickness, and angle of tooth whirl. Parahelicoprion teeth protrude outwards, not like a tightly coiled saw, but more like an arrangement of cutting blades. This indicates that it relied less on crushing slow-moving invertebrates, but rather hunted by inflicting traumatic damage against durable, fast prey. While Helicoprion measured over 25 feet in length, Parahelicoprion was slightly smaller in size, although there have been specimens found up to 39 feet long. That makes them, along with Helicoprion, some of the largest animals of the Paleozoic era. Next, we have Stethicanthus, and these creatures are still just as weird, but much smaller in size. They only grew to about 2-3 to three feet long, and likely tapped out at 20 pounds. They had small teeth, and were most likely slow moving bottom feeders. Their most unique feature was their unusually shaped dorsal fin, which almost looks like an anvil covered in small spikes. Scientists believe that this crest may have played a role in mating rituals or potentially scare away predators. Coba Lotus is another weird one, growing five feet long with large eyes and a bulbous head.
They had long flexible tentacles sprouting from their pectoral fins and to this day, scientists still don't know what the purpose of those tentacles would have been. Taking it one step further is Falcutus, a tiny 10 inch shark that lived in the deep sea. It had very large eyes in comparison to the rest of its body, but by far its most interesting feature is its dorsal fin, which bent forward over its head. Scapanorhynchus was a creature very similar to modern day goblin sharks. They had an elongated, flattened snout with electrical sensors to help navigate the deep sea. Growing up to 14 feet long with sharp, owl-shaped teeth, their tail and fin structure indicate that they were weak open sea swimmers and likely lurked by the ocean floor. Lystrocanthus, on the other hand, was more akin to modern-day frill sharks. These creatures grew feather-like denticles, ranging up to 4 inches long. And these denticles had a large main spine, from which other spines emerged. These creatures first appeared in the Carboniferous period, but disappeared from the fossil record sometime during the early Triassic. Cladosolachi, a creature from the late Devonian period, was similar in body shape to modern lamnid sharks such as mako sharks, but was actually one of the first true sharks to enter the fossil records. Six feet long with no claspers, which is something that most modern sharks have, and eyes positioned far forward on its head, which indicated a heavy reliance on vision to navigate. Its streamlined body shape also suggests that it was an agile predator. Cladosolachi was one of the first true sharks to enter the fossil records. Fossils of these creatures have been so well preserved that they include traces of skin, internal organs, and muscle fibers. Elagostolopus, however, is considered to be the oldest known shark. And this guy was primitive. Their scales date back to the Ludlow Epoch, which is about 450 million years ago. Elagostolopus did not have the skin associated with modern day sharks, but rather was covered in what can be best described as fish scales. Lycidas was a freshwater shark, only growing to about 15 centimeters long. It had flat teeth for eating clams, and lived from the early Carboniferous to the Albion age of the Cretaceous. Leveling up a bit brings us to the Orthocanthus. This too was a freshwater shark, but growing to about 10 feet long, it almost resembles an eel more than a typical shark. It had a spike protruding from the back of its head, and V-shaped teeth to exert pressure and crush hard crustacean shells. And finally, the top tier of these prehistoric shell-eating sharks is Tychidus. They too had specialized teeth to break through hard shells, but grew to over 33 feet long. This implies that their focus, rather than being on small shellfish, would be on the largest mollusks available. The squally corax, commonly known as the crow shark, was an eight foot long predator, similar to modern gray reef sharks, but with teeth more akin to tiger sharks. They were believed to be a coastal predator who also scavenged for easy meals. Food sources could have included turtles, mosasaurs, ichthyosaurs, bony fish, and other dead creatures that they happened to come across. Now, as we make our way into the more dangerous species, we come across Cretolamna, which is considered to be the ancestor to the Megalodon shark. Only growing to 10 feet long, these creatures closely resembled modern day salmon sharks, being active, fast moving pelagic sharks who were dietary generalists. Food sources likely included large bony fish, turtles, small mosasaurs, squids, and other sharks. Cartabiodon besides having a really cool name, was also a formidable predator. It grew up to 18 feet long and had large, robust teeth with fast swimming capabilities. It too preyed on a wide variety of different animals, but as a distinguishing characteristic, scientists actually found evidence that these creatures made use of nursing areas to raise and protect their young. Down to the top five and setting us off, is Creditus. Similar to modern day tiger sharks, they had a wide head, powerful jaws, and a stout body. Scientists believe that they swam at moderate speeds, despite growing over 22 feet long, and that they had a very unique, specialized diet of turtles. This is similar to modern day tiger sharks as well, who snap up turtles like they scooby snacks. Cretoxarena is another fascinating case, as despite growing to over 26 feet long and weighing in at over 5 tons, 
it still was not at the top of its food chain. However, despite this, scientists still believe that it ate copious amounts of large prey items and moved quick as a formidable predator. Hybidus a 6 foot 200 pound version of today's great white sharks had a varied set of uniquely shaped teeth indicating that it caught itself a wide variety of prey. These creatures were around for a very long time which indicated a very effective evolutionary design. The aptly named serrated giant thresher shark was known for its uniquely serrated teeth with an indicated overall size of over 16 feet long coupled with the advantage of having the tail potentially used to stun prey. And finally, we have Otidus, which is the genus that includes Megalodon. These were all very large macro predatory sharks. The top of the food chain. Apex predators for real. So that's my list. I hope y'all enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to thumbs up, like, and comment. If you want similar type content in the future, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. And I will see y'all in the next episode. Keep staying nerdy. Peace.